Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jen Lucas, and I am glad that you made the decision to join us and praise God online together. Today, we are celebrating Veterans Day and honoring all of our veterans who are our members here or friends of the church family. You can find a complete list of all of our veterans online where you found uh, worship today. You can find a link there. But we want to celebrate you and we honor our veterans today. We are in the midst of Word Alive session two, and so we are in our purple book. So I hope that you have your book. If you don't, you can still pick some out. You can request one online, and there are still some outside of our doors for you to pick up. And we, of course, want you to jump in a small group, or you can follow along in our daily devotions online. But just make sure you are in the reading and being a part of this journey with us. We are blessed with so many wonderful Advent and Christmas traditions here at Church of the Savior. We will be kicking off our season with Advent Vespers, a meditative service of music and narration. This year's service is called Where God Enters, and so you are being invited to enter into Advent by joining us online for our reflective Vespers service. Gifts from the Heart has launched, and this is our online way of giving back to the community by collecting gift cards. And so we want to make sure that you are a part of Gifts from the Heart, being able to support the community and the schools in our area. So make sure you look for the Gifts from the Heart. And then we also have drive through Nativity, and our drive through Nativity volunteer sign-up is now available. We have 120 open spots. They range from all areas, set up to tear down, to luminary set up, and, and actors and actresses. And so make sure that you go online and be a part of one of those 120 slots that we need filled up. Also, milk does the body good. Make sure you're drinking your milk and bring your empty milk cartons here. And you can drop them off in, in two different locations outside of our church so that we can light up our parking lot on drive through Nativity evening. Let us now come together and worship and praise God together. Coming from places that have seen better days, God bids us to celebrate this day, a day full of new possibilities. Coming with our breath taken away by grief, the Holy Spirit breathes new life within us, renewing our connection with God and with one another. Coming to worship, seeking a hope that will endure. Christ unbinds the fetters that hold us in death, speaking in word and sacrament and building community for holy service. As a man to see so much we have lost As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked And one by one the enemies whisper lies and let them off as slaves But we know that you are God who is the victory we know there is more to come we may not see so with the faith you've given us we step into the valley of the fray we call out to dry bones come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive mercy God for relenting love rescue every daughter bring us back the wayward sons and by your spirit breathe upon them show the world that you alone can save you alone can save we call out to try bones come alive come alive Call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. A battle of the ashes, let our sin army rise. We 
call out to drowns come alive. So breathe, oh breath of God. Now breathe, oh breath of God. Breathe, oh breath of God. Now breathe. Breathe, oh breath of God. Now breathe, oh breath of God. Breathe, oh breath of God. Now breathe. Let us pray. God of life, present and promised, you are the one to whom we call, for you are the one who hears, and you are the one who acts, bringing us new life with your grace and love and power. Lead us in our time of worship, that we may be prepared to follow your lead in places where life is at risk, places where hope seems far away, places where dreams die during sleep. When we leave our worship space, help us live the teachings we proclaim out in the world before us. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the midst of a valley filled with bones, amid the stench of a tomb's death and decay, a voice cries out in the name of life. And in holy mystery, life comes forth. These are the stories we are told. These are the stories we learn to trust. These are the stories we must live by. Listen and hear the Lord's message from Ezekiel. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ezekiel 37, I want you to imagine for a moment th this passage that you just heard. It's kind of like God is taking Ezekiel for a walk, a spiritual walk. And God takes Ezekiel for this walk and they come to this valley, but not just any valley. It is a valley full of dry bones, lifelessness, emptiness, barren. And at first glance, you would want to ask God, you know, why the heck are we here? I mean, what's the point of all this? There's, there's nothing attractive about any of this. Nothing's moving. Nothing's breathing. But God doesn't have Ezekiel just look at the valley. No, God takes him in walks him back and forth. God, it's like God saying, I, I need you to experience this. I need you to see this. God wants Ezekiel to walk through the dry bones. And today, I want to say, we all have dry bones in our lives. And so imagine for a moment God is, is picking you up through the valley of whatever your dry bones might be. Maybe it's your marriage that is dry or broken relationships, a broken relationship with your parents or friendship. Maybe it's financial woes. Maybe it's something dry in the dream that you just can't seem to reach. God is taking you into this valley. God wants to get eyeball to eyeball with you today and wants you to see 
It wants you to see what God can do with that dryness in your life. God wants you to walk through your valley of dry bones. And God wants you to ask, it wants to ask you the same question that he asked Ezekiel. You ready for it? Ezekiel 3, verse 3. God asked, can these bones live? God is going to ask you that question today. Can these bones live? In all the dry areas of your life, can these bones live? Ezekiel 37, if you have your Bibles, you know, turn there. I mean, you turn in the beginning, middle of your Bible, and you get Psalms and, and Proverbs, and you keep turning to the right, and you will eventually find Ezekiel. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel 37. And I want you to have that chapter open, and I want you to pour over the words today. But, but it begins with this walk that, that God and, and Ezekiel, they take. And God gave Ezekiel a new vision concerning the nation of Israel. You see, they had become so discouraged, so down, so defeated that, that we hear them actually say at verse 11, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. Their passion for God and for the things of God was gone. Their hope lost. Through their compromise of the word of God, they had cut themselves off from the favor of God. And they even say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. We are cut off. In your valley of dry bones, is your hope lost? Do you feel cut off? They felt that they were at the end of their road. They, they, they felt that they, there was no future for them. No wonder they had lost hope. It's hard to have hope when you cannot see a future. It is hard to have hope when you are walking through lifelessness, dryness. But God asked a question. Can these bones live? The prophet Ezekiel had lived through the final fateful fall of Jerusalem in 587 BCE. He and his friends and relatives had been marched off from Judah to, to life in captivity in Babylon. There he was a witness to the unraveling, unraveling of the social fabric among his people. He watched their disor disorientation emerge. The people of Israel had lost everything. They had lost their land, their temple, their holy city. They had lost their, their country, their identity. It was over for them. And so no wonder they said, our bones are dried up. Our, our hope is lost. We are cut off. Nothing to see here. Nothing but lifelessness. We all have valleys of dry areas in our lives. Many of us have experienced the valley of dry, dry bones at some point. Uh, again, a failed marriage, a, a broken relationship, being fired or, or pushed to resign from a job you loved, a business dream turned to bankruptcy, an estranged child, a fatal accident, an untimely death. Just about any major loss can leave us feeling as if life were a valley of dry bones. But God is asking. Can these bones live? God asked Ezekiel as they overlooked the valley in his vision. And Ezekiel answered, in verse 3, Sovereign, Sovereign Lord, you, you already, you alone know. Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Now, the answer was a bit of a cop-out on Ezekiel's part. He didn't want to say that the bones could, could live, the, the bones could live when he had little to no faith. He didn't want to say that the bones couldn't live and be reprimanded for his lack of faith. So he said, you alone know. So what is your response to God? God is asking you, looking at you. God, God is asking you as you look at your marriage that's on the rocks, can these bones live? God is asking you as you're, you're struggling with financial woes, can these bones live? God is asking you as you struggle in relationships, can these bones live? We want to answer, who knows? I don't see how. 
we are too far gone. Or we toss up our hands and say, only God knows or only God can answer that. Maybe Ezekiel's response feels more like something where you say, you know, Lord, it didn't have to be this way. As I look at all this brokenness, you know, Lord, you could have intervened. You know, Lord, as I look at all this, 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 this devastation or this pain, you could have stopped it. You could have made everything turn out all right, but you didn't. You didn't stop the disease. You didn't take the wheel. You didn't remove the pain. You didn't stop the attacks. And now a valley of dry bones, one dry area after another. But then God tells him to prophesy to the bones. Listen to this, Ezekiel 37, verse 4 through 6. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make, you, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel, he did as he was told. So look at verse 7 and 8. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked and the tendons and the flesh appeared on them and the skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. God began the miraculous work of reversal, reversing the power and process of death. First the bones came back together, then the muscles and then the flesh. And, but, but, but did you catch the end? There was no breath in them. They didn't breathe. See, I told you. I told you, God. All is lost. Nothing to see here. Lifelessness. It's over. God wasn't finished. God commanded Ezekiel. He said, go on. Prophesy to the breath. Look at verse 9 with me. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the, come breath from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live. Well, that must have been some sermon. Or not. Come. Come breath from the four winds, breathe into the slain. What Ezekiel is calling on is God's spirit, God's breath. The word in Hebrew is this word ruach, meaning wind, breath, spirit. It is not by chance that God said, come, come breath, come. The word breath, the word wind, the word is used, that is used has power, God's power. That same word, this rock word, is used in Genesis when God created human beings and then breathes into them. They become life. This power, this spirit, this breath is linked to creation, new life. And that same word appears 10 times in the first 14 verses of this chapter. Verses like 37, 5, I will make breath enter you. Or verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded and breath entered them. Or verse 14, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. Now go back to the valley of your dry bones. God is asking you. Can, can these bones live? And we say, I, I don't see how, or, or, or I just need to accept that there's no hope. I just need to, to, to know that there's nothing that can be done. Nothing can come of these dry areas. This is just what it is. God is asking you a question. God is asking you the same question that he asked Ezekiel. Then you see the power of God. You see that there is still hope. All is not lost. This is not over. God says in verse 12, My people, 
I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. Can these bones live? Yes, I will bring you back. That's my power. This is the power of God. I mean, really, try to imagine the multitude of dry bones and they're rattling together, trying to find one another. I mean, imagine that noise of the dry bones rattling and they're searching and the bones of uh, all the bones that have gone before us, they're coming together and they're reunited and they're, they're, they're finding their way. You know, the guy who just lost his job. And is terrified he won't be able to provide for his family, finding their way. The single mother who, who, who's working two jobs and has kids and pockets are empty, finding her way. The middle-aged man that's riddled with Parkinson. The young teen who cuts themselves to feel pain of life. The lonely, the aged, the unemployed, the sick, the, the, the addict, the, the bones of the dried up. Imagine these bones cast away, piles of death, and now they are rattling together to find one another. God is putting them back together. Imagine seeing the dry areas of your life. God is rattling away. Oh, oh God, I, I want my dryness to count. Put me back together. God's breath. His wind, his spirit blowing through your life, blowing through your dry places, blowing through your valleys of dry bones and putting you back together. Imagine God picking you up and walking with you through your valley of dry bones. But remember what he did. God asked you a question. Can these bones live? We have all come to a place in our lives, in our own journey, and we, uh, we have to look at, at our own situation and we have to answer this question. Can these bones live? Can this relationship get better? Can I have, uh, restore this relationship? Can I see financial breakthrough? Can I see wholeness where I once saw emptiness? Ezekiel answered God's question, only you know God. And God said, yes, I do know. I do know that if these, if these dry areas will live, I, I do know that that can happen, but I'm also asking you, Ezekiel, to speak into the dry areas of your life. I need to hear your voice. I need your voice to join with my voice. And God goes on the other side and says, okay, Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy and then I'm going to add my breath and we're going to come together and these bones are going to come to life. Ezekiel, I need you to be a part of this miracle. I need you to see what you cannot see. I need your voice to match up with my voice. Let our breath come together and fill this empty space, this dead space, this dry space. Let me fill it with my power. Can God do all this on his own? Yes, of course. But God asked Ezekiel to partner with him. What might happen if you partnered with God? What might happen if you let God's spirit blow through your life, combined your breath with God's? What might happen if you allowed God's spirit to guide you? What might happen if where you see death, God shows you something new? What might happen if, if where you see it's all over, it's, it's, it's finished, and God shows you, no, 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 it's just about ready to begin. What might happen if, if where you see dryness, God shows you possibilities. This power, the spirit, the breath of God, that same breath that empowered the prophet to proclaim liberty to the captives and to release the prisoners, how might that same spirit empower you? This is the breath of God, that that spirit of God that breathed life into human beings at creation. How might it bring new life to you? You might find yourself today in a valley of dry bones. And if you only see dryness, defeat, death, then hear the word of the Lord. Those bones, they're going to rise again. Breathe. If God can breathe life into dry, dead bones, 
and imagine what God can do in your valley of bones. Can these bones live? Speak into them. Come, Holy Spirit, rain upon our dry and dusty lives. Wash away our sin and heal our wounded spirits. Kindle within us the fire of your love. Burn away our apathy. With your warmth, bend our rigidity and guide our wandering feet. Amen. God assures us of a blessed pardon by saying, I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. You will be my people, and I will be your God. Thanks be to God. Now let us pray together in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are living, breathing messages of God's love for the world. This is our work of faith and our labor of love and our steadfastness of hope in Jesus Christ. Like the earliest Christians, we are here in this place because of the commitment and faith and generous generosity of others who shared the good news of the gospel in their time. So we turn now in our time and share our faith and our commitment through generous giving to support the ministry of this church in Christ's name. So let us gather our gifts together and offer them in God and grati- to God in gratitude and praise.
Join me in our prayer of dedication. From your hands, O God, come the blessings that make life possible, even the very gift of life itself. In gratitude and thanks, receive from our hands this portion of our labor. By your spirit leading, may we use these gifts to bless the life of others with the assurance of love, the promise of hope, and the course of justice. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Join me in our benediction. We are a people loved by God. We will live as signs of this love. We are a people blessed with hope. We will live in light of this hope. May the love of God and the grace of Christ and the courage of the Spirit strengthen our faith and set us loose to share God's love with all. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.